So in my last video, I talked about the 1845 French Sabre, which attracted a lot of attention on different uses of this model of Sabre and different armies around the world, uh, one of them including the uh, United States Army. And so today we're going to be talking about one such variant, and this is the 1850 Foot Officer Sabre. So the 1850 Sabre is based uh, in generally on the 1845 pattern. So as far as the grip goes, this is virtually the same grip, uh, same guard, same shape, same uh, uh, same let's say design, uh, roughly. The, the big difference is uh, on the grip. So most 1850 swords uh, or sabers have a wooden grip covered with shark skin. So this is very interesting because uh, most French swords don't have shark skin, they have horn grips, but uh, the uh, most of the American ones use the shark skin. Now, what's really interesting about this is that when you read the regulations on these sabers, you see that they were actually supposed to use seal skin to cover those grips, but I've rarely seen any of them that are really covered with smooth leather. Um, most of them, and I said probably like 80%, maybe more of 1850 sabers I've seen are covered with shark skin. I'm seeing shark skin here. Please note the difference. This is not ray skin. Uh, ray skin is very different. It has larger nodes on it. It's uh, much more coarse. And uh, the grain is, and the nodes on, on, on the skin are very uneven. Uh, whereas this type of skin, which usually comes from dogfish, which is a type of small shark, um, is actually very different. The, the nodes are way smaller. The, uh, they're actually way more uh, regular as well. And this is what you see on nearly every type of sword. Uh, from, uh, uh, from um, of course, American swords, but also British ones uh, use these. Even French ones that do use uh, shark skin have dogfish skin. Uh, the only examples you see of ray skin being used is actually used on uh, Navy swords. Uh, the British Navy, uh, for their officers, usually use uh, ray skin. Not sure why exactly, but that's where the, the, the main use comes. And of course, Japanese swords use ray skins quite a lot, but some of them, and I have one in my, uh, my collection actually, do use dogfish from time to time, which is called Aisame. Now, coming back to the 1850 uh, itself, so as I was saying, the grip is very typical. The shape of the grip, I just love this, this shape of grip. Uh, I, I think it really uh, has a nice feel to it when you grip it. It's, of course, uh, really meant for a handshake or thumb grip. Uh, it's, it really doesn't feel right when you're using a hammer grip with this one. You really need to use a, a more open grip, uh, which is really fine for, for pointing. And, of course, there's no back strap as with the 1845. Uh, there's uh, the, the regular... Uh, wiring on it, which adds a lot to the, uh, uh, the firmness of, of the grip. Now, for the blade, the blade is very different from the 1845 pattern. This is actually inspired by the 1821, so the previous French officer sword. I'm not sure why the American army chose this pattern instead of the, 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 uh, the more uh, typical 1845. I would guess that this sword, this, uh, this sword blade is actually closer to what was made in England. And I know that many officers seem to like British swords at the time in the American army. Uh, some manuals are inspired by the, uh, the British uh, fencing manuals of the time. And, but this is really, uh, and this is a mistake I've made too in the past, you've seen my Previous videos, I, I still say that, oh, this is inspired by British swords. 
Uh, in fact, it's it's really not. When you look at it closely, this is a typical 1821. Uh, the Ricasso is very short, as with the 1821. Uh, it's got this main central fuller, which is common to both the, the British and the French sword, but it has the back fuller here. So this is a Mamasi type blade, uh, which you see on, again, 1821s. Uh, I guess one of the, the two main difference that make people think that this is inspired by a British Sabre is first the length. So the length is the same as a British Sabre, not like in 1845 again, uh, which are a little bit shorter. And the, um, uh, also the point is a spear point, like most British Sabres, but usually the 1821 has a natchet point. But I think this is being, being the really only difference with an 1821, I, can, we, I think we can safely say that this is just a modified 1821 French uh, saber blade. Uh, also the, the cross section here on the, uh, the tip of the sword is not a diamond shape like you see on British sabers. This is actually a lenticular shape, uh, which you see again on French swords. So uh, the blade is a lot more tip heavy uh, than uh, the most of the French sabers I've held. Uh, the, the point of balance on this one is quite forward uh, for an infantry blade, which would make it, I guess, quite, a, uh, uh, quite an aggressive cutter uh, as long as you're able to wield it properly, but this is well balanced, this is a well balanced sword. Uh, this was made in Clangental, so this is a French blade, uh, was made during the uh, the French Civil, uh, sorry, the, the American Civil War, and uh, it's uh, a typical French, uh, typical, sorry, American foot officer sword. Uh, the, now there's two different models of this saber, one of them is meant for uh, general staff officers. So from uh, starting from Lieutenant Colonel and up, uh, you have the this other pattern, which has a larger guard, a little bit more covering of the uh, the outside of the the hand, and has the the letters U.S. inside the guard as well. Now some of these patterns were about by uh, foot officers. So from major and below usually you had the foot officer's sword, the foot officer's saber, like this one, uh, but sometimes people bout different uh, non-regulation type swords, uh, including the general staff version, but also uh, other types. There are some that are fairly unique. Uh, I'd say they're kind of a mix between a British saber and a French saber. Some of them are very, very British, down to the, to the blade and everything. Uh, they're heavily inspired by the 1827 rifle officer sabre, uh, but most of the ones you see are this, uh, this regulation type. Uh, so the scabbard is also typical of the 1845 pattern. It's a uh, leather scabbard with brass mounts, uh, and this was uh, used from 1850 to 1872 when you have the 1872 is 1872 pattern appearing, which has a way slimmer blade on it, uh, and which was not very liked by uh, the, uh, the the soldiers using it. So uh, this pattern of blade was used during the, the Civil War, of course, uh, by both sides, by both by the, the Confederate and the Union side, of course, because it, it had been accepted before the uh, uh, the Civil War broke up broke out, but you see very few uh, Confederate swords uh, on the market. The reason is most of them were destroyed uh, as the Union Army was disarming the Confederates. Uh, and of course, those who survived were probably hidden away or uh, preserved because they had some historical importance. I I rarely, rarely see Confederate swords on the market. Most of them are fakes. So it's very hard to see to say really um, what the typical Confederate sword look like. Uh, some of them are said to be real or actually very cheap, uh, very roughly made uh, compared to, to these ones. So most of them are uh, not really 
uh, different dribble. Uh, so you see, uh, of course, the etching will be different. And this is also one way in which the 1850 is close to the British Sabres, is that Americans really like to have these uh, British-looking etchings on their blades, whereas French blades of the time are usually bare. Uh, some of them have etchings like these, but it's really not the norm. Uh, but the norm in the States was to have these um, long scrolling uh, etchings on them. And I don't know if you can see it, uh, you have, uh, I'll, I'll post pictures, uh, clearer pictures of these etchings, but you have on this side the American Eagle and the, uh, the motto, so E uh, Pluribus Unum, with, and um, in, in many one, and uh, various battle decorations and uh, filigrams. And on the other side, you have the, uh, the U.S., of course, um, uh, the U.S. symbol, letters. And as I was saying, this blade was made in Klang et al., so the signature is on the back here. This is uh, a rare example of a French blade. Many of them were made in the States. Uh, some of them exported from Germany. Uh, but you don't see that many blades coming from France. Uh, this is uh, kind of a, an exception. And you have, of course, the stamps from the, uh, the Klang et al. Um, uh, factory. So very fine sword, really. Uh, these are among my, my favorite types. Uh, the, I think they marry quite well some of the, uh, the, the, great, um, the, the, the great aspects about the, the French 1821 uh, for the blade and the 1845 for the guard. So I've not seen a lot of comments uh, from the period about how these swords were considered in the American army. Uh, one important aspect is that sabers and swords in general were on the way down during the, uh, the mid 19th century in most of the world. Uh, they had kind of a comeback uh, when trench warfare came back, uh, but usually during those times the, uh, the, the, the favor was with, of course, the, uh, the revolver for officers. And there was this debate, especially in the cavalry, as to, uh, you know, is, are sabers still really useful? Some of them said yes, they, they're, they're very useful. Some of them said no. But when the 1872 pattern came up, apparently a lot of officers complained that uh, the sword that they were carrying was now completely useless and that if they were needed to defend themselves with a sword, they much prefer to have something, um, something practical and usable. So they came back to the 1902, which was the the answer to that problem. So uh, again, not not a lot of, uh, of talk about the uh, uh, the uh, uh, efficiency or not of the saber, uh, but it was liked enough to be carried all over the uh, the Civil War, uh, and uh, maybe that's testament enough to its uh, its uh, efficiency. Uh, that's about it for this video today. So this sword will be on sale on my website, so iSellSwords.com. And if you have any questions about it, please post below. If you'd like to learn more about some of the swords on display here, um, ask me. I'll be very pleased to make a video about them. And um, then I'll see you next time. Thank you.